，多謝同。Please invite the administration to join us. Last time we asked some questions, and there is an information paper. It's、uh, CB bracket one, one two eight stroke fifteen to sixteen bracket O two. Now、uh, you can read it through and see what questions you have for the government. Because of time constraint, we would like to start the clause by clause. Well, that will be after we have asked all the questions in relation to policies. May I remind you that if you would like to move amendments to the regulations, please、uh, give us notice as soon as possible. We have already extended the scrutiny period of the regulations. Now、uh, to the second of December,、uh, any amendments will have to be notified before the twenty fifth of November. On the twentieth of November, we will need to make an oral report report to the House Committee. Perhaps I will ask the administration to take us through the paper first. Thank you. In response to issues raised by members last time, we have compiled a. Response paper. There was quite some time in the last meeting spent on the application of the amended regulations. As we've said, and this、uh, comes from section two of、uh, subsection two of section thirty nine of the、uh, primary regulation. It says that、um, well, if Uh, this provision applies <coughs> on、uh, alterations of existing buildings. depends on the depending on the scope and scale of the alteration works. And we have considered the application. The buildings department has also looked into it. The BED will、uh, will adopt a pragmatic approach to scrutinise each alteration and addition works to decide whether the amended regulation applies. We have decided that unless there is a change of、uh, the pre- of use in the premises, that's one. And if it if it involves、uh, expansion. Expansion alteration. Otherwise, the amended regulation will not apply in relation to restaurants and cinemas. Say, if the restaurant or cinema is converted from an a, a different types of premises, say for example from a shop. And if、uh, the restaurant is extended, say taking up the next shop, then we think the amended regulation should apply. Other than that, the BD's view is that the amended regulation will not apply for restaurants if there is a a red、uh, an alteration, change of the doorway. The、uh, refrigeration facilities, then the amended regulation does not apply. The buildings department will consider exercising a discretion if. The application of the, the regulation will, will result in、um, some unreasonable situation. Well, the buildings department has engaged a consultancy to 
conduct a study. Last time, members asked us to give information about the methodology of the study. You'll find the information in the paper. Let me just uh, go through it roughly. The consultant assigned staff members to conduct an on-site survey in numerous local public places involving peak periods on weekdays and holidays involving about 2,500 users. It covers the use of uh, sanitary fitment in various places, uh, the time is taken, satisfaction, queuing time, and on top of that, the number of sanitary fitment in the premises. Then some uh, mathematical model, say for example, queuing model of operations uh, research to assess the required number of sanitary fitments in female and male toilets. Then we work out the number of sanitary fitments required. And also the number of people using diff using uh, sanitary fitments in different types of buildings. Say, for example, a place of public entertainment. We have the information about public e place of public entertainment in the consultancy report, and we found that. For every 25 to 40 female uh, persons, uh, a water closet will have to be provided. And compared to existing regulations, which is uh, for 50 to 100 female persons, a water closet is to be provided. So you see that uh, the number of sanitary fitment has doubled. We've also taken reference of information in the consultancy uh, report. We found out about uh, the number of people using uh, sanitary fitment in a, pub in a place of public entertainment. The ratio one to one may not be suitable. So we have increased ratio to 1.1.5. So when you combine the two sets of figures, I'll give you an example, a 600 place of public entertainment because if we use the 1 to 1.5 ratio, our calculations indicate that there would be 240 males and 360 females using the facilities. And if you use the baseline figure of 360 females and use the previous formula, then our results uh, that we need to provide 13 uh, facilities for females compared to current standards where well, they only need to uh, 4.15 so you can see the increase is some um, 2.6 times on the last occasion Mr. Tia Wai Chun had written uh, he had written uh, about replacing usable floor space by usable floor area and the reasons are the building department has provided fire escape uh, they have a code of practice for provision of means of escape in case of fire and the professionals are very familiar with the intention so our amendment is just to standardize the wording and regarding the number of uh, sanitary facilities there is no impact on the last occasion 
There was also a question about ADV 28, and we have referred to the code of practice, and in paragraph 3 of the PNAP, all the recommended uh, profesh, uh, uh, provisions, including unisex toilets, the government strongly recommends the, adopt the adoption of such provisions. And lastly, regarding uh, alteration to provision of sanitary fitment, the legal advisor also raised this question that some premises, if they have some short-term or temporary change of male-female sanitary uh, facilities, would that be feasible? On the last occasion, we said that policy-wise and law enforcement-wise, we do not feel uh, that that is a breach. But legally, would that involve legal uh, actions? We are still consulting with DOJ, so we might need to supplement uh, in writing in the near future. And lastly, on the last occasion, legislators also asked the requirement that premises need to provide the uh, legal minimum of facilities. Well, we referred back to the law as the number of facilities has to be indicated in the building permit because the building permit, uh, they have an archive and the public can uh, inspect these records so this is basically my response okay mr tommy jung tommy jung first of all i'm very happy to see uh the supplementary document it had responded very promptly to our different uh, requests especially paragraph two they uh, refer to the expansion of restaurants and theaters. So my understanding is that as long as the area does not change, that any A and A, our so-called A and A, uh, uh, we don't need to add new sanitary facilities. But I would like to ask, in expansion, I see. Well, after reading your document, the expansions. Uh, in my mind is that if I increase by one foot, I have to add uh, sanitary facilities. There's no percentage, uh, 600 seats or 900 square meters, and I've converted to 902 square meters, I need to add uh, uh, facil well, sanitary facilities. Is that correct? Uh, can you give us some leeway in expansion? Well, let me uh, elaborate. Uh, what I mentioned just now were the major principles. Uh, if you understand, if there is an expansion, uh, there might be space to accommodate more sanitary facilities. So there's no reason not to, to do so. And if, if the design is not for its intended purpose, we have to review it. But uh, we understand that under certain circumstances, as Mr. Chiang said, they had just added one square foot or uh, just a small percentage and it's not enough for them to increase the sanitary facilities the building department as I said just now they can exercise discretion and uh, provide exemptions so you sh uh, legislators do not need to be concerned the BD will execute its uh, powers in a reasonable manner well, the catering industry, they apply for open air, uh, open seat area, uh, open dining, uh, OSAs. It takes some 10 months. So a lot of establishments will apply for a temporary license. Uh, they might not even get a temporary license. They might get a formal license. Uh, the OSA might not be objected to the... Uh, the OSAs take uh, some 10, 20 months 
So if we have an open seating arrangement, all these OSAs, they are outside the license premise. They add a table or two or, two or three. Uh, these might uh, be uh, based in shopping malls. So if they have uh, two or three extra tables, and uh, therefore does that lead to a change in the number of sanitary facilities? Your paper doesn't mention that. Well, you might not be able to answer today, but uh, we haven't entered clause by clause scrutiny. Uh, I need to uh, uh, leave, but uh, the catering industry will welcome this change. Well, we don't. The catering, the catering establishment won't have large objections to this. But I just wonder, uh, can you handle OSAs? Uh, we do have very small number of applications, but uh, they are consistent. Uh, it is reviewed during the licenses and uh, license application time. Uh, we look at uh, this is a new premise. We'll apply the new standards, but when they have alterations, uh, if we need to uh, communicate with FEHD, well, this is not just FEHD. We're talking about an expansion. The OSAs are outside the license premises. They add three or four or six tables. So that looks like an expansion of business. Now, even though the application is made at the same time, it's not uh, endorsed. I'm worried that if I apply for a temporary license and I apply for OSA, and eight months' time when I get the proper license and the OSA is not approved, you, you'll say that uh, I've extended my business. You need uh, more f sanitary facilities. Well, you might not... In you haven't, might not have encountered this in your work. Uh, you do not uh, consider into such uh, detail, but I would like you to uh, think about it. It's not an A and A, but it's still an extension. So, could you see how uh, you can handle this? Well, the issue, as Mr. Jung had said. It's not an alteration. It's probably a licensing condition, and th this it is not covered by the legislation. This is probably a public uh, sanitary requirement. I understand when there's a ex uh, when there's alteration expansion. There, you we need to apply the new legislation. But I'm so. Uh, this is not uh, clearly spelled out. Uh, uh, in thirty years' time, when we're not around, uh, this uh, might not be—you might not be able to handle this. Yes, well, we can examine this issue. We can discuss with the FEH, FEHD. You have to liaise with FEHD. Next, we have Mr. Fang Kwok White. Thank you, Chairman. I tried to uh, sit through the whole uh, um, meeting, but there was a clash of uh, other commitments. I don't quite understand the figures and the, the reasoning and the logic. In paragraph 6, you said that uh, before alteration, after uh, amendment, the number of female sanitary footprints, there is a change, that is good, but I don't see uh, the water facility, the water closets, not the urinals, uh, for males, is that affected after the amendment? Uh, so my first question is, according to paragraph 6, your calculations, the male uh, water closets uh, figure, does that change? Females will change from 5 to 13, according to to your 600 uh, person place of public entertainment example. So will male uh, facilities remain at 5 to 6 or is there any change? If there's a change, 
uh, is it going to be more or less? And I still haven't understood the uh, operations research queuing model. They mentioned waiting time, using time. Well, this is my understanding of male, female uh, uh, usage, and wh that's why we want to add more f uh, female water closets. It's not of the number of people using these facilities, but the consultant emphasizes on uh, the number of users. Uh, out of the 2,500 uh, respondents in the survey, uh, they had interviewed more uh, females. So I still feel that uh, uh, females using a uh, water closet, it's it's not that there are more females, uh, it's uh, that they just use, the, they spend more time. The queuing time, the waiting time uh, is longer. So your reasoning is that in a place of public entertainment, the, the usage time is not a, a queuing time. So uh, you say that uh, the ratio being changed from one to to one uh, increase to one to one point five. Uh, we talked about females' uh, usage time. Uh, it's longer than males. It's uh, and in winter, uh, women use uh, the facilities even longer than males. So, could you provide some further elaboration? Because uh, it might be possible uh, the argument is on one to one one to one point five you are uh, basing your reasoning on the number of users not the usage time that's a very good question well first of all we need to refer to the last uh, meetings papers in schedule a that is paper In our last response paper in the CB 1-1607, we had identified the different premises, uh, the male facilities, the urinals and water closets, and uh, female sanitary fitments, especially the number of water closets. So these figures, how are they arrived at? Uh, well, Mr. Fan is correct in his question. Why do we have two different uh, standards? The first one is the number of people using a sanitary fitment. That is 1 to 1.5. The basis came from the consultancy report. The consultant sent people to different places looking at uh, different premises and the number of sanitary fitments for female and male toilets. The ratio of uh, Hong Kong population may not be 6-4 when it comes to uh, male to female. Mm, they found that uh, in a lot of places, uh, the number of sanitary fitment in female toilets um, are more, say, for example, um, cultural facilities and cinemas. There are more female using sanitary fitment in these places. As a result, we have arrived at 1 to 1 1.5. We've also taken into account the future demographic development. That's the first basis. The second one, as Mr. Fan said, is uh, the demand, the time sp uh, <coughs> it takes for a man or a female to use the toilet. For female, it will take longer. Say for every 50 women, the number of water closets provided may be higher than that for male, that is, water closet and urinals. And we obtained the information from uh, the consultancy report. We have adopted them and arrived at these figures. 
Uh, maybe you wait for the second time. Next, Mr. Muffin Cock. I'm happy to see the positive response from the government within such a short time. I immediately had a meeting with uh, the trade after the, the last meeting, and they were very enthusiastic uh, because uh, everyone was there within a very short notice. Now, basically, you have addressed the concern of the trade. Uh, that there, there is un, there is no unsurmountable problems with related to alteration, but I see from the government's paper it says that uh, if it's a change of the refrigeration facilities or change or a change of the doorway, then uh, it doesn't apply. But what about the internal layout of cinemas? Say, for example, uh, renovation. Or updating of um, project pro, um, of projecting facilities, they don't need a proper uh, projecting room or projector room. And it, or if they add a projector room, then the number of seats will decrease. I don't know whether the amended regulation will apply. As a result, I'd like to hear from the government. And I still need to talk to the trade to see if they uh, accept this. And in paragraphs uh, five and six, in relation to your consultant's report, you said that uh, in the past, uh, for a place of public entertainment with a seating capacity of 600, then there will be um, 2.6 water closets, which is uh, well, um, well, 2.6 times more. I go to these uh, place of uh, places of public entertainment a lot, especially cinema. I think <coughs> that uh, well, when there are complaints, uh, it's mostly about uh, concert halls or uh, theaters of the government because they have specific uh, break time for just places of entertainment. People can leave. And go to the toilet any time, so the problem is not as serious. If the re amended regulation is applied, then well, I don't have to spend time waiting for my family members if I go to concerts. My concern is whether you have taken into account the increase in number of persons with disabilities because of an aging population. I see that uh, there are uh, more and more wheelchair uh, users. So have you take that have you taken that into into account? Would you consider increasing more um, disabled toilets? And also uh, unisex people. If there are enough disabled toilets, then uh, the total number of facilities will have increased. And uh, well, elderly people can use the disabled toilet, and people with us. Uh, special gender needs will or can also use them. So uh, there is double room in relation to disabled toilets and uh, sanitary fitment requirements for PWDs, persons with disabilities. I think there is a problem here. It is not under the scope of uh, this regulation. It's under another regulation of the buildings. Ordinance is about a building's planning regulation, which says that if uh, PWDs use the premises, then suitable toilets um, f for PWDs will have to be provided, and is stated very clearly in the regulation.
back in 2008, uh, that regulation was enacted. In June last year, the Buildings Department set up a, um, a manual technical committee to collect views from the trade on updating the manual. I believe that the Buildings Department uh, will follow this up in the committee. Mr. Allen Long, first I'd like to ask about the application of the amended regulation. We'll find, we find the answer in paragraph 3. Change in use. If there is a change in use, uh, then it applies. Otherwise, uh, for existing premises, say for example restaurants or cinemas, uh, it doesn't. It's clearer now because if there is a change in use, you may have to apply for a different license. That's clear. But for the second part, expand extension, it applies. Then, and if there is no extension, it doesn't. If we take into consideration uh, about unreasonable difficulties, If you consider them to the two together, then there is a very s strong. There, then uh, there is a lot of uncertainty because you don't, you won't know when it will cause unreasonable difficulties and when it will not be affected. Well, if you introduce the two different concepts in paragraphs 3 and 4, that is, uh, whether it's an extension and whether it will create unreasonable difficulties. Will it be difficult? to ensure that members of the public, especially uh, women, will benefit with the enactment of the regulation. Legal advisor, thank you. Before I answer Mr. Leung's question, I'd like to ask the government to clarify the information in paragraphs 3 and 4. They talk about a pragmatic approach. It seems that there is some legal basis or discretion to do so. So I'd like to ask the government to tell legislators on the strength of which provision of the building's ordinance that they are empowered to adopt a pragmatic approach. And then we will uh, look at the provision to see what factors are to be considered because uh, this is a subsidiary legislation. It must ex it must operate within the powers given by the primary legislation, and we have to be clear about the legislative intent. Um, maybe we get the clarification so that we can have a more focused discussion. As I said at the outset, in relation to the application of the new regulations. Is pursuant to sections 39 bracket 2 of the building's ordinance. And it says that works which of which the commencement has not been approved by the building's department, including alterations or addition works, the new regulations shall apply. This is the principle. So when it comes to Plans approval, a uh, number of factors is to uh, are to be considered by the building's department. Works can only commence after the, the plan has been approved. We mentioned about the pragmatic approach. Well, the amended regulation is about the standard of sanitary fitment. And that in turn 
is based on two main factors. First, the type of premises. If it's a place of public entertainment, then as a, a set of rules will have to be applied. If it's a cinema, a different set of rules is to be applied. So if it if originally is A, it now is changed to B, then new considerations will have to be taken. The second basis is about the area. That is, how many people use the premises. If it involves an extension, then decisions will have to make have to be made as to whether a new standard is to be adopted as a result of the ex expansion in area. Before the legal advisor answer my question, I would like to uh, make clear why I ask my questions. If you consider extension and the discretion of unreasonable difficulties, I uh, am concerned that uh, our efforts will go down the drain. Because your question is a very legal one, that is uh, based on which section allows you to adopt a pragmatic approach. And I think the legal advice is trying to find out the objective criteria. But I'm afraid after the government has answered, uh, you realize that it's fruitless. If we endorse the regulations, of course, we would like women to benefit as soon as possible. But if you have to take into account whether there is a reasonable difficulty after an extension, then it may be very lax. Just like what Mr. Tommy Jung said, that, uh, that a lot of things can be added without changing, without increasing the number of female toilets. The discretion mentioned in uh, paragraph 4 applies to what Mr. Jung said. In principle, it's very clear. For restaurants, if they need to expand, the area is increased, the, uh, there are more customers, then of course they have to comply with the new regulations. Because under the new standards, different areas of restaurants, they have different uh, requirements. So if they add seating, and technically they can add uh, sanitary facilities, to the expanded area. If they don't do so, that's not reasonable. We also see, as Mr. Dong Jung said, we're just talking about expansion, alterations, or additions. Uh, only if it's only one or two feet, a very small area, they are not. They cannot add sanitary facilities. Then, from a feasibility uh, point of view, we're adding difficulty to a restaurant. Then that's why we have uh, paragraph four. So under reasonable circumstances, if uh, they cannot comply with the regulations, the BD will will consider. Uh, all, uh, if you allow me to follow up, in paragraph six, you said very clearly. On the last occasion, you we asked and you answered. You said the consultant had conducted field research and that the amendment refers to how many feet and how many males and females you expect then according to the consultant uh, report you have fine-tuned the figures well if they expand uh, where they now in a new range and the under objective legal uh, interpretation, then 
you ha have to add sanitary facilities, and, but then you say uh, you, you can exercise discretion because uh, uh, they cannot uh, feasibly add uh, sanitary facilities, even though uh, we have uh, new regulations in place. Uh, so that's what I'm he hearing. So you're saying, so even if we're in a new area, uh, we have the new study, you can still exercise your discretion and exempt them from adding female sanitary facilities. So I want to clarify, what are those? Well, if you just say one an increase of one foot, then we don't need to add. Well, then we don't need to add one foot. So I want to know, after the law is passed, where, the, where are the, where is the standard? We don't have the principal legislation. We have a where there's a formula. So, you know, if you add paragraph three to paragraph four, uh, I just I'm just wondering how should we interpret the. Uh, well, well, first of all, the building regulations. Uh, it's not retrospective. Uh, we have the purpose of Article 39 is that if there are large alterations and additions, then the building department, uh, if it's feasible, the building department will enforce the new regulations in the alterations. So you need to understand the, the spirit. These new regulations will apply to new buildings. Mr. Fang got white. My phone got. Thank you, Chairman. In my first round, uh, I referred to paragraph three. That did not include Uh, without adding space and adding seating, there are some uh, uh, renovation works inside the theater. So will new law apply? I could not include so many examples. I could only use a restaurant as an example. It's the same for our theaters. If there is no increase to area that leads to an increase in seating, then they don't need to apply the new regulations. Could you provide a written... Uh, response as well so that uh, we can have a record for future okay I'd like to ask in, in paragraph 5 you refer to op uh, operations research well there is a delegation uh, on the weekend they sent to me an email and I will circulate it amongst members. They say that uh, in overseas there's some experience uh, on the female time, uh, uh, on washroom usage. They gave you t Taiwan and UK uh, surveys uh, where females use double the time. So if it's double, then why do we have a 1.5 figure in Hong Kong? Uh, so, uh, do Hong Kong women use less time? You've done a survey in Hong Kong. So, what are the male-female usage time ratios? Well, we have to go back to schedule A of the uh, uh, paper uh, in the last meeting. So, we don't use number of people. If we look at the number of people using facilities, if you look at the table, uh, different area, different locations that would lead to different uh, ratios of users. But if you look at, just look at the number of water closets, uh, the number of uh, water closets, uh, uh, female water closets outnumber two male two to three times. Uh, we in the past we had focused on the number of users. So that's why I keep referring to Schedule A. From these tables, my, my question is, 
even you say that the number of users is 1.5 more females but uh, if male if females use the facilities longer than the males uh, as in overseas then how did you calculate that uh, we have so many water closets there's still a missing step so can you tell us you must have these figures if you don't have them now you can provide them later what are the number of what's the usage time between males and females well in paragraph 5 we state that in paragraph 6 uh, for a 600 uh, seating place of public entertainment for a place of public entertainment we need to provide one uh, water closet for every 25 to 40 females you don't understand what I'm saying I know that you have a, uh, uh, you based it's based on number of users so we have 360 females why do they need 13 water closets from 360 how do we get 13 is it because uh, you have calculated females take longer than males so how do you do that calculation as we state in the par in the paper the consultant did a field research i know that so i'm asking do you have those figures? Because in the UK, they'd use double the time and uh, a woman in Hong Kong quicker. That's why we only need 13. So how, why do we have 13 water closets for 360 people instead of 15? We had said that in place of public entertainment, the new regulations uh, for every 25 to 40, uh, we need to provide one closet. Uh, but and the old standard was for every 50 to 100. How did you get the calculation? Uh, why do we need one for every 24 to 50 people? You uh, need to. S the deputations say you're you're not adding enough. So you need to tell people how did you get that calculation? Uh, what are the factors that you considered? Uh, you've already taken account that uh, women take longer time. So you still haven't per been able to persuade. We know you've added. We know you've added uh, the facility, but deputations are saying you have hadn't added enough. So you need to give us another calculation. So after accounting for the number of users, what other factors have you uh, considered? And if these are already factors we suggested, such as the comparison of usage time between male and females, you need to provide this extra information to convince us. Uh, allow me to use an example again. In Annex A and the last paper, For example, uh, let's say a theater a 500 seat theater in Annex A, page 2 of the last paper Yes, we found it. So you can see, uh, just now I said, aside from the change in number of users, the consultant uh, survey had considered a male and female uh, in a 500-seat theater. They, uh, the male and females currently how long they need to queue uh, to use the relevant facility what is the satisfaction level so the consultant collected the data 
and they wanted to use mathematical modeling to calculate uh, how many facilities they needed to add. Uh, for example, let's say for females, if they need to wait two minutes, how could they shorten the time such that they were satisfied? And the result was that we need to provide so many facilities. And, and that is listed in this table. Well, just now you said you referred to a 500 seat theater example. So perhaps you need to get your consultant and say, why do we need s six water closets for females? C tell us uh, to get, get them to demonstrate how they got that figure. Uh, the waiting time, the queuing time, the using usage time. And uh, regardless of whether I understand, s some colleagues would understand, just demonstrate their mathematics. So why is this important? It's because you need to convince, uh, you have to convince us that you considered all the factors, you did the mathematics, and you're, you're not able to convince us right now. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll uh, provide a written response regarding the mathematical modeling. Mr. Langaki, the, the chairman's question just now is exactly what I'm trying to follow up. Uh, I think the the answer is in paragraph five, the queuing model of operations research. Now, since the secretary has agreed to provide a written. Uh, I don't want to look at calculus formulas because lay people such as I cannot comprehend. Uh, we are just politically, uh, we just uh, we just consider the political implications. So your operations research queuing model, uh, you should provide that prov you should provide an explanation in layman's terms rather than calculus so before the legal advisor answers my question uh, well, because we've gone through one or two rounds of question and answer could you answer my question uh, your understanding of the building regulations is deeper than mine so is it uh, as the government's intention uh, and in paragraph 3 we refer to alterations and additions plus uh, the unreasonable difficulty and uncertainty in paragraph 4. So uh, will our efforts go down the drain for enacting this piece of uh, regulation? May I try? I know that uh, Mr. Ellen Leung knows very well the building's ordinance. Well, let me s try to speak for the government to see uh, tr what they're trying to say. According to paragraph 3, I think they have uh, referred to sections 41 and 42 of the main uh, of the primary legislation, especially for pri uh, for section 41 in relation to the um where a pow exemption to give uh, the power to give exemption of the building's authority, and they have and they will set out uh, what they can do under what circumstance. If you if you look at uh, subsection one of uh, section forty two, it says that uh, upon receipt of relevant application, I believe there is about an application of exemption upon payment of a fee. Um, if the building's authority thinks that there is a sp there is special circumstance, um, may make um, changes if it is possible, and that is the framework. Well, that's the um, the, the the words to the to that effect. 
If you refer to section 42, you will find that the scope of the section is also very wide. And it says if the circumstance is special, what does it mean? It's not clearly interpreted in the in the ordinance. And if it says it can change, but what does it mean? And it's not it's not defined. If we use this framework, and applies it to th uh, paragraph three, that if there is an extension, and uh, if there are special reasons, say for example, physical constraints of the building, and. Uh, as a result, there are unreasonable difficulties, then there is a legal basis for that to work. And as to whether uh, nothing will come through, I think it depends on whether the applicant can convince the building's authority that there are difficulties. to get an exemption. I think that's how it works. I don't know whether I, I have answered Mr. Leung's question. Well, perhaps the government can deal with this in the supplementary information since they're going to give us uh, another information paper. Mr. Gary Fan, uh, you are technocrats. You said that uh, there is a formula and there is uh, authority. But the authority was not cited to us. If females spend will need more time in the toilet, then uh, what parameters have you taken into account? I'm interested in the authority as well. You have to explain very clearly. You talk about uh, the number of people, and that's my first question. You have you you have cited uh, three cases, and uh, you said that if uh, it has a capacity of six hundred people, there will be a hundred and sixty percent increase, and it's two point six times increase. It seems that it, it, this is a very good figure to convince the public, but if we apply the same logic to shopping mall and cinema, and you said that the uh, shopping mall is. Uh, the shopping mall applies to ground floor to the third floor. What about those above? Let's look at the capacity uh, one with a capacity of five hundred. You said uh, six seven sixty seven female. And the what number of water closets is increased from two to three only? And you said it's a hundred and fifty percent. But according to our understanding, well, uh, a woman will spend two or three times uh, more time in a toilet than a man. And as a result, increasing the uh, sanitary fitment for, f uh, for women to this number will not resolve the long queues. And the, and the picture is very different from the one that you have painted us. It is the same for cinemas. Say uh, seating capacity of five hundred, and uh, the water closet for women will be increased from two to six, an increase by three times, and that is uh, more uh, in proportion. But I'm concerned about uh, shopping malls. And what about those that are above uh, the third floor? 
So do uh, the sanitary fitment facilities will have to be changed. Mr. Lu. We'll try to explain in simple terms about the uh, mathematical model. The consultant has indeed used uh, operations uh, research theory and formula. We'll try to reduce it to uh, simpler terms for your understanding. If you need, if you need it, I'll give you more information about um, shopping malls that are above the third floor. I'll defer to the to my colleague. Is the well, the uh, ratio of population factor is different. For the fourth floor, the uh, population factor is different. It's not that it's not changed, it's just that it's not listed out. How has it changed? Can you give me more information next time? Yes. Yes. The, uh, the figure for those that are above the third floor. If there are no other questions, then well, we will ask the government to give us some response paper. Yes, the legal advisor will have some questions to ask, and then we will start class by class. I would like to add something to section 40, to what I said in relation to section 42, is uh, subsection 1 under section 42. Actually, there are... Uh, two more sentences in section 42, and I'd like to hear from the government. And it says that uh, the granting of a permit should not uh, undermine the uh, structural standard and also the sanitary fitment standard. So um, perhaps the government can explain to us, taking into account sub subsections 1 and 3, if an exemption is to be obtained. How can it done without um, without undermining the sanitary fitment standard? And if that is to be considered, uh, how do they strike a balance? Please give us an information paper. Yes. And what about uh, seeking views from the from the uh, D of J? You please would you please also give us your answer in the in paper? Yes. Class by class, who is to take us through that? I will defer to Mr. Yu. We will use the markup copy prepared. By the Secretariat, that is the CB bracket 153 stroke 15 to 16 bracket 01. Well, uh, section 1 is not set out here, that is commence commencement. It will commence on the 14th of December 2015. If there are no questions, let's refer to the actual changes from the markup copy. First of all, page 2. The definition of um, cinema has been crossed out. You will find it in cinema three, uh, in uh, well section three with some changes. So it's uh, just moved. Page three. In relation to the terms under sanitary fitment standard. Most of the changes are uh, drafting changes. I'll, well, the provisions were enacted a long time ago, and for some various reasons, they are changed. Say, for example, uh, you will see that on the right hand side, workplace, uh, there is a new definition. 
In relation to workplaces, an office, an industrial undertaking, a shop, a food room, the change is minor. But in the past, uh, we have it was quite um, com it was quite verbose, and we've changed it to make it simpler. The definition of a uh, cinema. <coughs> There is uh, some textual changes. In the past, we have there was a mention about uh, the projector room, but times have changed, so we have uh, make some changes as well. There is another one. It's a question also asked by Mr. Tony Te about the definition of. Uh, Usable floor area. You will find a new definition. Well, in the past, it was a term as usable floor space, and now it's called usable floor area. When we calculate um, um, fire escape, we've used this. We've always been using this definition. So we propose to use the same concept when calculating sanitary um, fitments. There is uh, no actual change. We've added some new uh, uses, uh, say for example, a funeral parlor. So we've added the definition. If it appears in other uh, ordinances, and so we will adopt the same definition. Any questions? No. Please move on. <coughs> Next is uh, section four on page five: residential buildings. Like previous provisions. We have introduced uh, some changes in the use of words. We aim at uh, drafting it in a simpler way for easy understanding. I'll just uh, go through. Um, I'll just quickly go through them. And in relation to provision of sanitary fitment, the standard. If you refer to the old uh, schedule and the new. And the new one is uh, very little change. But when we calculate the number of sanitary fitment, there is a change in the num in the number of people using it. In the past, it was uh, 15 for an additional facility. In the future, me we, we may use uh, well um, over 12 people. <coughs> When we calculate the uh, the number of people in the residential building, in the past we adopted a defin a ni definition, that is, for the building's authority to set a level as to how many people will be in a residential building. So to clarify that, we had specified how to make the calculation. For every nine meters per person uh, density, we'll provide one sanitary fitment. So that has been the building authority <coughs> in approving permits. So we feel that uh, that should be spelt out in the legislation. And later on, in different, uh, in the past, the building authority uh, would have to determine the density. And now we use a specific figure to spell it out, such uh, for make it easier for the public to understand. Please continue. Then we move to page 10 on workplace. As we said just now, we used uh, workplace to, to substitute for undertaking an office. And if we look at the table, there is no change. We are still using the old table. On page 14, 
On page 14, right hand side, there is a rectangle. We said that for other workplaces, we use a one to one ratio for male female. Now, compared to the past, compared to the office space, uh, it was two to one. And now we have uh, changed the male female ratio such that the impact uh, is that there'll be more facilities for females. On page 14, there are some changes, uh, the triangle, uh, some standards uh, defined by the building authority. We have just spelt it out. So for in different workplaces, how we calculate the uh, density, the population density. Okay, please continue. Clause 6 that deals with a place of public entertainment and the change here for example in table 9 we see that we need to uh, provide facilities for uh, females it might be hard to understand the table but in our previous document we had a uh, uh, table that indicated change between the old and new and in the past it might be 50 for every 50 hundred uh, females it'd be one facility uh, and now it's between every 25 40 females will add one facility so we largely increase the number of facilities for females so if you want to uh, uh, understand it more easily you can refer to the previous paper and here I'd like to mention on page 17 in 2b we have the ratio of 1 to 1.5 uh, compared to 3b that is a change and uh, compared to place of public entertainment the triangle the we have also highlighted the calculation of uh, the population density Please continue. Clause 6A on page 18. It uh, deals with sports stadia. This is a new clause. This is a new definition. So there's no comparison. Put simply, regarding sports stadia, we have set a standard. The standard is that for every 100 males, there would be one urinal, one water closet for 100 females. There would be two water closets. And the calculation uh, in sports stadia, it's for uh, the sports uh, audience. And there is a standard. For example, if there's seating, we can count the number of uh, seating in the audience. And according to the consultant, we set the ratio as one to one, so so that reflects that we have uh, probably more males uh, 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 watching sports. Please continue. Page twenty one, cinema. We made some changes there. The male female. Uh, ratio has changed from 1 to 1 to 1 to 1.5 that is changed in 1b and uh, we also changed the table for example in females in the past we had uh, for 100 to 400 females and now we have uh, 40 to 100 females uh, will provide one water closet so if you're interested you can refer to uh, the table in the last in the previous paper Please continue. Then we move to page 25, shopping malls and department stores. This is a new clause. So, aside from place of public entertainment, where we uh, use the 1 to 1.5 ratio, uh, this is on page 29, clause 
C. At table 18, 19, we've set some standards regarding density. As so we mentioned just now, in on page 29, we've pointed out uh, in the basement, uh, f uh, first floor, seven, second floor, we use a density of uh, three square meters per person, and uh, for for other levels, we use 4.5 square meters per person. Okay. Page thirty. For we have a new definition for religious institution. We use a one to one point five uh, male female ratio, and we also set a standard for water closets. It's one for every for for 100 males, and one water closet for 50 females. And the density is 0 0.5 square meters per person. Please continue. Page 32, clause 7. C is about funeral parlors, that is a new definition. The standard is also 1 to 1.5, well, male to female ratio, 0 0.5 square meters per person, and in tables 23, 24, 25, we have the uh, number of water closets provided for the different sexes. <coughs> Any questions, we can continue. Thank you, Chairman. Page 34 is restaurants, as we said in the beginning. Our principle is that we need to standardize with FEHD. So, the conversion table for male-female water closets, uh, we've amended that to uh, change the standard. The details uh, we can look at, let's say, male facilities. Uh, we had uh, urinals and water closets for male, uh, and now it's been amended. The impact uh, in the last paper we had set the stand, we had uh, highlighted uh, the FEHD standard. And uh, schedule B, we have uh, set the FEHD standard, and the purpose is uh, to meet or to standardize our standards with FEHD regarding small, medium restaurants. No problem, then we'll continue. Clause 9 is a corresponding amendment. So in Clause 9, when we refer to other legislation, we need to add the 7A, 7B, 7C. These are corresponding amendments. Please continue. Clause 10 on page 40. The, this is an outdated uh, regulation. Uh, we had uh, said that uh, in a shopping arcade, when there are, there are uh, established, uh, when there are restaurants, there, there's a mixed use. They will use the uh, area inside the mixed use uh, shopping arcade. So uh, the industry is very familiar, and uh, Clause 10 originally, they had to deal with uh, different uses in the same building. Uh, so we feel that uh, clause 10 is uh, not necessary anymore. Let's continue. Clause 48. Uh, we have a corresponding amendment. We have uh, drafted uh, some 
uh, redrafted some wording. Any questions? Well, so if that is done, we have a separate, we have another one. We have a building administration amendment. These are the corresponding amendments. In 123i, we have a change in uh, usable floor area in document CB 153 slash 15 uh, page 7 uh, we have to we have to change uh, uh, there's a corresponding amendment to actual usable floor area so regarding uh, our scrutiny are there any questions well we well, we have gone through the Chinese version. The legal advisor can go through the English version. Uh, if we don't have any questions, then I will ask the government, uh, do you have any amendments? No, not at this stage. So, legislators, if you want to put forward an amendment, uh, on the 2nd of December, we have to report to the House Committee <coughs> The subsidiary legislation uh, is due on 25th of November. On 20th of November, we have to report back to the House Committee. If there's no... Just now, we completed the scrutiny, but uh, since we are still waiting for some written submissions from the government, I would have to convene one more meeting to look at the government's response. Uh, we have uh, available the 13th of November, so I'd like a, a detailed response uh, to the questions raised just now, uh, the industry's concerns, and some deputations feel that you don't have enough facilities, and we'll deal with them in the next meeting. If we don't have any um, further business, then we'll adjourn the meeting. Thank you for attending.